Good evening. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church on a Wednesday night. Uh, we're doing our study of the Acts, Book of Acts yet. We're up to part 40. And so we're moving right along. We're up to chapter 12 in the, the Book of Acts. And we'll be looking at chapter 12, verses 1 to 12. Uh, it's been about eight years since Stephen was martyred. And we know the, the main person that was persecuting the church and uh, causing all the problem was Saul. He's been converted, so he's on the other side now. And he's out uh, trying to win people to Christ rather than kill them and break up the body of Christ. Uh, the Samaritans have received the gospel. Remember that Philip, uh, one of the deacons, he went down into Samaria and uh, brought the gospel down there to them. And then we had uh, Peter going to Cornelius and uh, the Gentiles received uh, the gospel. So we see all these things happening, apparently, as we look that uh, the Gentiles getting saved really upset the Jews because uh, they just didn't understand uh, how uh, Jesus fulfilled the law and, and how these Gentiles could be reconciled to the Jewish religion. And not only that, the Christians seem to be trying to change the whole world. They're out there trying to evangelize the whole world, and, and I had them upset. Uh, we noticed that uh, there's, as far as I know, in, in the Jewish uh, belief in that there's not a whole lot of uh, proselytizing. There's not a whole lot of reaching out trying to convert people to be a Jew because they're pretty uh, I, I isolated, if you would, into what their, their own nationality. And so uh, they, they see all this anger building up. And so we're going to look at verses uh, 1 to 12 again in chapter 12. And we're going to see the uh, the beginning of uh, persecution of the church by the government. So let's look at verses 1 to 4 and we'll look at this persecution. It says, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king uh, stretched forth his hand to, to vex a certain other church or to oppress or to bring harm to uh, torment. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. That happened around 44 AD. So we know that uh, Christ um, was crucified, depends on who you talked to around 30 to 33 A.D. And so uh, James is only maybe 11, 10, 11 years after Christ's ascension that uh, James has killed the brother. The brother John, remember, there was Peter, James, and John were kind of the inner circles uh, for Christ. And uh, he became, and uh, because he saw it pleased the Jews, in other words, they were, hey, they were happy to see one of the apostles killed. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread, so we're having the Passover at this time. So there'd be a lot of people in Jerusalem at that time. A lot of people would be in you know, kind of a party atmosphere. Uh, everybody would be up and feeling good, you know, and everything going good. And that a lot of excitement. And when he had apprehended him, uh, Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaterni quaternions of a soldier to keep him, intending after Easter, after the Passover, to bring and forth to the people. So, we have Peter here, and he says, after this is after the celebration's over, because they couldn't uh, execute anybody during the Passover. So after that was all over, he's going to bring Peter out, and uh, with, the, with the idea of following up on what he did with James. So we know that um, we see that he's vexing the Jews. In other words, he's he's reaching out now to persecute the church again. This is the government. This isn't the other, just the average people. And Herod wants to. Uh, in his position, they're always wanting to please uh, the Jews. They don't want a lot of uh, problems out of the Jews because if you do, then the Roman government will step in and, and they might lose their position. So uh, he's going to try to do everything he can to please them. So the, he takes in verse 2, he murder comes into the picture, he kills uh, James. Now, we don't read any about anything about James, if you remember, if you've been with me through this study. Up to this time, we haven't read the name James. So James must have been doing something behind the scenes as far as the, the Scripture is concerned. He, uh, we know the rest of them were out there. They were evangelizing. They were witnessing. So James must have been one that was really kind of uh, out there really doing what he was called to do. And so uh, Herod decided to take him and uh, to get their attention. So then he killed him uh, with the sword. Now, if I look over to James, or to Matthew, excuse me, Matthew 20, 23, uh, Jesus is talking to uh, James and John and their mother. If you remember, their mother, they're walking, and uh, she had something she wanted to ask Jesus. And he said, well, wh what is it? And uh, she said, uh, would you grant that my sons here, one could sit on your left hand and one on your right hand when you come into your kingdom? And uh, in chapter 20 of Matthew, verse 23, he said, And he saith unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them 
for whom it is prepared of my Father. So he says, you're going to be baptized. He says, you shall drink and eat of my cup and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. So he's talking about being being martyred, being crucified. He's going to be crucified and he knows that. And he says, you're going to go through some tough times too, uh, James. In fact, you're going to be martyred. So we know that James, Dick, John, he ends up over on the Isle of Patmos. And we, as far as we know, he died more or less of old age. And so he sees here that, uh, so he kills James and uh, fulfills kind of what he had promised to do. But he also, we know that uh, there's also a promise to the believer who suffers for Christ. Over in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, it says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So uh, we know that if we're suffering with Christ, we're part of the body of Christ. And that day comes when uh, James, when he left this world that day, and he went to be with Christ. Uh, so he wasn't here very long, but we know that uh, uh, God was uh, finished with him. We can see again that, uh, how he works in Peter's life here. Peter's in prison too. But uh, Herod saw that it pleased the Jews. And so again, he's wanting to do, he says, uh, you know, if this, if they were like, if this pleased them, this thing, well, they'd be Peter's the leader. You know, he's the, the main apostle, if you would. He's the one that speaks for the group a lot. In fact, he did over at Pentecost over there in chapter two. And so uh, Peter's one of the leaders. And if killing James really pleased him, he's now Herod is really getting excited. You know, when I kill Peter, then they're going to really love me. They're going to really uh, care about what's going on. They're going to really rejoice and all these things. And so um, Herod's all excited about this. So he takes uh, Peter. And he put him, he apprehended him, and he put him in prison, and he delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending to, after Passover to bring him forth to the people. So he puts him in, and he secures him. Yeah, he's he don't want him getting out. He don't want him getting away from him. He's got him uh, captured there, and so he puts him under that heavy guard. And we know in uh, John 16, 1 to 3, Jesus told the apostles. He said, you know, he, he foretold, he said, what was going to happen to them? And I look over in, in John chapter 16 and verses 1 to 3. We we'll read here, he says, uh, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended, or that you don't stumble. You know, when these things start happening to you, don't let it get you down. Uh, you know it's coming, be ready for it. He says, uh, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And we know that uh, that was fulfilled right there with Paul. Over as he was persecuting the church, he wanted to get rid of uh, the people that were of the way. Uh, that was earlier name for Christians uh, because he thought they were against God. He was, he was destroying what God had set up. So he thought he was doing God a favor. And these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So they didn't acknowledge uh, the Father or the Son so they're doing that to, to the apostles. They're punishing the apostles. And uh, we know that as Christians, we're going to face some things in life. Uh, this uh, time that we see here in, uh, in the United States and in the world today, how Christians are being persecuted in foreign nations. Uh, they're being martyred. Come to know Christ as your Savior, as a Muslim. And a lot of times you're kicked out of the family. Uh, you lose all your possessions, all your position. And a lot of times you can get killed, uh, martyred for your faith. So we look in America today and we see how the... The, the, our country is changing in their attitude toward Christians. And these things that we see right here can happen today. When they start persecuting believers uh, and, and the, the crowds, uh, the secular world starts uh, and enjoying that. And really, it's kind of like the, the Nazis over in uh, World War II. Uh, there was a uh, study done here. There's, they was looking at the, uh, the Holocaust and uh, Anne Frank. You probably heard of Anne Frank and her diary. And uh, they did a survey as they were uh, talking to people about that. And they asked them the question, do you think that genocide could happen in America? Uh, the question was, uh, would you, do you think it could happen? And a third of the people that responded to that said, not, they'd not at all be surprised if the, a systematic murder of a religious group happened in America today. That's out of YouGov, uh, that's a YouGov uh, survey. And it, it, uh, as I looked at that and read about that, and it was kind of strange how it went across the whole board. If we looked at our electorate, the three major uh, blocks of electing, uh, of the electorate, we have the Republicans, the Democrats, and the Independents. And here's how it broke down. 34% of the Republicans said that it could happen. Wouldn't be surprised if it happened. 36% of the Independents said they wouldn't be surprised. And 37% of the Democrats. So you just about a third of everybody that was surveyed, no matter what their political persuasion was, believed that it could happen in America today.
So what, what would we do? If the persecution comes to the, the church in America, what are we going to do? How are we going to, we're going to have to take a stand. And that, that's the challenge. Uh, the, the apostles and all them, they were called upon to make a stand. If we look in places like Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, China, North Korea, I mean, India, you could just go all, all around the world in different areas, and we see all this persecution of Christians. And uh, they're called to take a stand. Even when the government is, uh, you know, there's a government in control, and we know God raises governments and brings down governments. But when they're when we're being persecuted, then we have to face the persecution and take a stand for Christ. And that's what Herod is doing here. And this is a perfect picture of how that the, the times can change, how people can start uh, looking on Christianity as a in a hostile way, like that were that it's a problem, that is something that causes a problem in society. You know, they start blame, blaming the ills on uh, certain people, on certain groups of people. Why is that happening? Well, it's because this people over here are doing this and doing that. It's uh, it's kind of strange, you know, not getting into the politics so much, but if we just look at what's going on today and uh, we see how uh, one one group will be pushing something, and I want this to happen, I want this to happen, happen. When it happens and it don't turn out good, all of a sudden they turn and say, well, it's their fault over there. It's what they really wanted. Uh, it was their problem. And uh, we see that happening more and more today. Uh, people want things done, but when they don't turn out the way they want it to, and it goes, things say sour, uh, then they want others to be blamed. So we see here's uh, Herod, and he's looked at the church, and he said, you know what? Uh, by persecuting the church, by getting rid of some of these people, um, the people like it. So this makes a ch good chance just to wipe out that church, wipe out that movement. But uh, we know that's not going to happen. Uh, the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not stand against the church. So let's go a little bit further. Going down here and look at verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, so they put him in prison. But he said, here we're going to see that a prayer was made for him without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, uh, Peter's not aware of this. He don't, want, he don't know what all is going on. Uh, we don't feel like he really understands that James has been martyred because he'll later on talk about James. But the, the idea here is he says uh, uh, he's in prison. Prayer has been made for him. And, and when Herod would have, verse 6, when Herod would have uh, brought, brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers of the, before the door kept the prison. So we see all these guards. Here he is. He's laying in prison. He's between two guards. He's up in chains, and he's sleeping. And uh, you think, well, how can you sleep under those conditions? Well, Peter has, a, has that peace, that uh, passes understanding. And uh, He's, he's understanding that, you know, God's in control. God's going to take care of him. And he knows of everything that happens, uh, God's going to meet his needs through all this. And so he can sleep in the midst of that. And notice as we see here, Peter's in prison. We don't see the, the Christians out marching up and down the street. We don't see them protesting or carrying on and everything. What they did, they went to the one place that, to get, that they could get help. We have the government turned against them. So they can't go to the government. They can't protest to the Herod or the end of the Romans. But they go to the Lord, and, and the prayer that they're doing is it's continuous prayer. Uh, they're reaching out to the Lord for help, and so Herod, he's going to bring Peter forth and put Peter sound asleep. Uh, and again, it kind of amazes me how he says, under those circumstances, how he can sleep. He tells us in Psalm 34, 22, The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate or shall perish. So God's going to take care of us. And it, we can look at it right here and say, you know what? Why is God working in? He's going to deliver Peter, but he didn't deliver James. Uh, James was a faithful servant. James had a, uh, a work for the Lord. And he was doing what he should be doing. And, but God allowed him to be martyred. God allowed him to be martyred, but he's going to deliver Peter. Well, the only answer is James's work was done. He had accomplished what God wanted to accomplish through him and through his death. Uh, God finished the work that he wanted to accomplish through James. So he's got more to do for Peter, so he's going to keep Peter alive. And So we can look at situations like that, that people get sick. Well, that person uh, with this COVID, uh, this virus that was going around, this pandemic, um, some survived it, some didn't. And why would God allow this one to live and this one not to live? It's because God had a plan as, as his children. Uh, we, he's going to take care of us in a way that is best for us. And uh, we know that you know, death is one of those things you think, well, you died, so you didn't come out of that too good. Well, uh, the idea is that as a child of God, it only gets better for us. So we understand here that Peter's caught up, and, and he's in this prison, and he's under this heavy guard, and, and uh, 
Herod's planning on killing him. Verse 7, And behold, the, the angel of the Lord, uh, this, is, this isn't like a Christophany, what we would read back in the Old Testament. Normally back in the Old Testament, we see angel of the Lord, you think it's our pre-Bethlehem appearance of Christ, but that wouldn't be that here. So uh, we see that uh, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, or he kicked him on the side, and said, Hey, raise up, rise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. So Peter's laying there sound asleep. The angel kind of kicked him in the side there to wake him up, and he starts to get up, and the chains are falling off of him. And the angel said unto him, I gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. So we see the, the obedience of Peter. You know, he's, he's half asleep. You really don't know what's going on for sure here yet, but he's doing what he should be told, should be doing. The angel is telling him what to do, but God does for Peter what Peter can't do, but Peter has to do for himself what he can do. And so that's kind of a lesson for you and I. We need to, our part, we need to play our part. Uh, I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, if you want, if you need a job and that, you just pray and pray and God will give you a job. Well, that, that's true. He can, you pray and pray and He can, but you need to be out looking for the job. You need to be out doing your part, putting out your resumes or whatever. So God does for us what we can't do, but uh, what we can do, we need to be doing for the Lord. So again, He follows through what He says, get your garment on. And He went out and followed Him and was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. He thought maybe I'm just kind of dreaming this. this is, and it's understand he's sound asleep, and all of a sudden he gets awoken by this angel, and all these things start happening, and it can be confusing. So he didn't know. He thought it was a vision. But when they were past the first and the second ward, they went through up past all these guards. Uh, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened unto them. So they get out there, uh, get to this big iron gate. It opened of its own accord, and they went out and passed on through the street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. So the angel got him out of, got him out of prison. He gets him out on the street. Uh, Peter's kind of wondering what's going on here. He's kind of caught up, kind of confused here. And uh, we see here that uh, and when Peter was come to himself in verse 11, so what, what happened was Peter says, kind of wakes up here. He says, oh yeah, I said, I know, I know what's going on. I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. In other words, he says here, he, he delivered me out of the hand of Herod. He brought me out of the jail. And those people of the expectation, they're expecting my execution. Uh, they're expecting to see me martyred just like uh, James was. Although, again, we don't know if that's, uh, if he's, when he talks later, if he's talking about James, the brother of John, or maybe James, uh, his half-brother. But the idea here is, he said, I know that they was expecting me to be martyred. They was expecting me to deliver it up. He said, and God has delivered me. And so when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. We're going to stop there for today. But so he's going back to a place he's familiar with. He's, he, he don't know how many people are there. He don't know what all is going on. He'd be aware of, you know, hey, people must be praying for me because it's part of the church. And so he's going to go there and uh, we're going to see how their prayers worked and how we should respond to answered prayer. But again, as we look at this, we can see, as to start with, we see the government coming against the church, uh, the government with the persecution, and again, we can look at the world today. And we've watched it for years now, where it was uh, being in connection with Voice of the Martyrs, where they have stories about all these people around the world that are being persecuted for the faith, losing their life, losing their homes. And remember back when ISIS was so uh, prevalent, and we saw pictures of them in Egypt where they chopped off all those men's heads. and. Uh, so the persecution has been around the world and it's going to come to America. There's no doubt about it. We're going to start seeing it more and more. So we need to be ready. And a good example right here, we see that how Peter was when he was caught up uh, with the persecution. He's put in jail, but he didn't let it destroy his faith. He trusted God. He even went to sleep in the midst of it. And I, I don't know if I could go to sleep in the midst of it. I don't know if I'd have that, that peace or not. And we know one thing, that God is in control and we can trust Him. So our testimony must ring true. As we go through persecution, and I think that's why God brings us into some tough times in our life, to we said that you know the tribulation work worketh endurance or patience, and he what he's doing he's kind of conditioning us. It's like when you you start off 
building your body up with weights and as you start off with lighter weights and you build up into more and more stress and that on your body to make it stronger and stronger. And I believe that's how God works in our in our lives. As Christians, He brings us through some tough times that we might be stronger. So when the, when it really gets tough, when it really gets hard, that we can stand firm and, and trust Him. As He uh, delivered Peter here and as He delivers us some, through some trials in life, we can be ready for that. So when the time comes, that we'll be, be ready to face whatever we have to face. But we face it in faith, knowing God's in control. And to be taken out of this world, to go to heaven is, is a blessing. It's not a bad, bad thing. So, but first of all, what we have to know is what that we're a Christian. We have to be born again. We have to be born into the family of God. The persecution is going to come to Christians, but you know, when we read in the, the tribulation, those seven years of tribulation is coming, that the whole world is going to suffer. And uh, of course, the church will be gone by then. So to, for you and I, you need to understand that as Christians, we'll be gone, but those that are unsaved, if you're watching this today and you're unsaved, then you need to repent. You need to turn from your sin, turn and put your faith to and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as payment for your sin, that you'll have eternal life, that when the time comes, when the persecution comes, you'll be ready for it. it the world is going to be tough for everybody, Christians and non-Christians, but for the Christian, we have something that we, brings a peace, that brings security, knowing that who's in control, and, and he's going to take care of us. So we just trust him, and it may not turn out the way you want it to turn out. You know, the one that you want to live may die, and the ones you don't, you don't care about that, they may live. We don't understand all of it, but we know that God is in control, and so we're going to just trust Him and do our part. So next week we're going to look at what happens now. Peter, we get to verse 13, he's at the door, and uh, we're going to see the response of the people that are praying fervently. They're praying continuously. They're really burdened for Peter. They want Peter to be delivered, and so we're going to see how they respond when God answers their prayer. But if you're not saved, this is the day, this is the time. Turn and put your faith and trust in Christ and have eternal life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day and we thank you for loving us and what you do for us day by day. And as we read this account of uh, Peter's arrest and his deliverance, Lord, we know that you're able. There's nothing that man can do to hold us when you want to set us free. So we just place ourselves in your hands that you just work in our lives, Lord, and that when the time comes, if we have to face anything like that, that we'll face it with faith. Just trust in you, Lord, knowing that uh, no matter how it turns out, that you're in control and that thy will be done. So thank you for loving us. Thank you for what you've done. And as we study this book of Acts, we pray that we would gain wisdom and, and insight and discernment. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.